Search Hawaii, where food meets culture, is brought to you by Grand Wailea, a Waldorf Astoria resort on Maui. We live to create extraordinary lifetime memories with transportation provided by Hawaiian Airlines. I'm Mike Lafaro, and I'm from Block Island, Rhode Island. Kainoa Horkajo from the island of Maui. I'm a professional chef. I'm a student of the culture. Mike and I met at the Grand Wailea working and just hit it off. I love anything that has to do with the oceans. Love spending time in the mountains, getting into the ocean, all of it. Kainoa had this great idea to do some dinners based on the Kaolana Mahina. I thought it was an awesome idea. We went on adventures up into the mountain, down to the ocean, and really just started connecting with that. So I do what I do, Kainoa does what he does, and see how that translates to a plate. Guided by the moon, but with a modern twist. It's the ultimate way to connect to the food. It's a coming together of food and culture. On this episode of Search Hawaii, we're on the island of Oahu, where Chef Mike and Kainoa will search for ingredients to create a one-of-a-kind dinner based on the Hawaiian moon calendar. There are many faces to this island, the dry leeward side and the wet windward side, and that's where we begin our search. This time of the year, end of summer, Hinaya Eleele in the Hawaiian moon calendar is we think about it as being very uh, beautiful summer, but it's also an uncertain time of the year. Hurricane season is in full effect. Weather can change in an instant. And for the dinner, we're gonna go do something we've never done before, so I'm a little worried about it. Aloha. Hey, aloha, Rick. Aloha. So we're meeting up with uh, a friend, Rick, who's gonna take us fly fishing. I've never done fly fishing before. Looks like a lot of fun, very finesse, I'm excited. So, you guys ever done any fly fishing? No, nope. never. So you guys want to do a couple of casts before we go out and then head out? Yes. Sounds great. Very good. <laughs> good. Let's do Thanks it. Okay. Right. Rick teaches a lot of people fly fishing and usually it's all catch and release to take care of the ocean. But we need some stuff for dinner, so our friends at Kualoa Ranch have graciously allowed us to go in and grab just a couple. So the first thing I'd like you guys to do is hold the fly rod like a hammer. Oh You're going to lift your rod straight back up to 12 o'clock. Rick gives us the rundown on the technique for fly fishing, and it's totally different than regular, any kind of short casting, spinning, or anything. So uh, it's really it's really cool. It's, uh, it's more about finesse. Slow down the tempo just a little bit, but a little more juice. There you got it. Money. Nice. You guys are solid. OK, same thing. Slow down the tempo a little bit. Good. So we've Good. tried our hand at the technique on land, and now it's time to get out there and see if we can catch some fish. Rick's going to take us out with a kaika who takes care of uh, the fish pond and we're going to go to a spot that a kaika says that um, there's plenty of oil. We're actually going to head to the other side of the fish pond to get oio or the bonefish that we're looking for. Because of the big full moon that's out and the big tidal shifts, the oio like to bunch in that area right next to the wall. So guys, here's the scoop. We're going to put on a small weighted fly uh, called uh, Crazy Charlie. We get out to the spot and Rick shows us the flies that he makes. And, and that's just another beautiful aspect of fly fishing is that the fisherman makes his own flies. So they all have their little secret recipes. And so it's just really, it's another whole other art in it. Itself too. Every time I've always watched fly fishermen, I wonder why they whip back and forth like that. And we learn from Rick that it's about getting more and more line out there and getting the line farther out. And so we're trying that technique out, and it's not as easy as it looks. Hey, Mike, the fish aren't in the tree, bruh. Double duty, bro. I'm trying to catch birds, too. <laughs> the art form of fly fishing kind of takes on a different role when you're in the wind on the edge of the fish pond. And, and it's, um, you know, I think I caught a tree. That was the first thing I caught. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit more difficult once you're off the calm, calm shore. Oh, yeah, guys. Hanapa. Got one. Finally, I feel a bite on my line. And that thing yeah, hooks on and it starts running. If he wants to pull, just let him run. Yeah, just let him run. Like I see, they take the 
it's game on, but OEO are smart, man, and they're, they're tough fighting fish, so that thing runs on Kainoa, it's running all around, and it ends up wrapping around a, a sign. Oh, what happened? Rick grabs the line, and the ah. fish jump the hook. And we've been out here fishing for hours now, and it's getting a little frustrating. We need something for dinner. We gotta hook a fish. Rick, got something. We start casting again, and about five minutes later, I hook up to another one, so stoked. He does a big run out into the pond. Oh, yeah. bummer. Kainoa hooks up again with a second fish, and that OEO gets off, too. Oh, Hanapa again. Got another one. How's that run? Good. Good. Good run. I got two on the line that I didn't reel in. Third time's a charm. Oh, well done. Beauty. Nice OEO. Oh, yeah, buddy. So we got one OEO now, but I really want to catch one too. So I got to channel my inner Kainoa right now. Well, we got another one on over there. Oh, Hanapa. I was watching your tricks. Good job, Mike. A couple minutes later, Mike hooks a fish. This fly fishing stuff is actually kind of fun. There we go. Nicely done. Woohoo! I'm really excited as a chef to, to work with OEO. It's a lot of work, but super rewarding, which is why you don't see it on a lot of, on a lot of restaurant menus. Perfect. Bro, I think with the two, we're, we got enough for dinner, huh? I think that's perfect. Yeah, it'll take more than we need, right? All right, on, all man. good. Absolutely. Rick, nice. we got two OEO, just what we need for dinner. It's time to get on the move. We're going to head way out to the west side to Waianae and meet up with a friend who's doing something amazing with something you'd never think about eating. We got our two OEO for the dinner, and now we're heading out to Waianae to meet up with Vince hey. Dodge, who has found out a way to I'm use Kiave as food. How you doing? So good. How you doing? We meet up with Vince and some friends who are down on the beach gathering Kiave bean pods, and he does a bunch of stuff with this. He mills it into flour and makes energy bars and tons of different products with it. You guys picked a great day. We got the gang picking beans, so. You know, we'll give you some Kiave 101. Show, awesome. Show us the way. Okay. Sounds good. All right, let's go. Okay. Although Kiave trees have thorns year round, their big time when they drop a lot of their beans is in the summertime. So it's the best time to get out there and harvest these things straight off the ground. And what we're looking for is a bean that has no blemishes on it, no pukas. You know, let's let's pick a few beans here, and then you guys can show me what you got. And if they're looking good, then. We just keep moving around. Vince is showing us how to pick the beans, uh, what to look for, blemishes. And it's just going to be really interesting to see how he's going to turn these into food. Here in Hawaii, we've never heard about eating kiave. But in other parts of the world, South and Central America, they've been doing it for thousands of years. That's where Vince learned this process, and that's what he's showing us. Yeah, here's our beans, and they're ready to get washed and dried. Grab a handful. So we're going to um, blast this with water. Very short, very intense wash. Watch the beans are dark, okay? right, there we go. After they're clean, we throw them out on this drying rack, the first step of the process, and everything Vince has done is totally homemade. Stuff he's gotten at the hardware store that he's scabbing from his backyard, and it's really, he wants it to be accessible for anybody to do so we can all utilize this resource. This is our low-tech dryers. And we made these on purpose with materials that we had around so that people can do this in their communities with the materials that they have around. Oh, wow. All right? Black. What Vince is doing is just super grassroots. He's, you know, just based on just research and being shown by wow. a few people how to take this just abundant resource and make it viable for Hawaii. It's, um, it's, it's beautiful. In order, in order to make kiave pod flour, we gotta break up the beans in, in little pieces. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna get these in the blender and make some flour. Okay. Vince makes large batches of flour and a hammer mill that he got from Argentina, but we're making a small batch for dinner and we're gonna do it right in his blender. Oh, yeah, the smells unreal. What a trip. It's beautiful stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wanna shake it? Yeah, sure. Oh, look at that, huh? That's Kiabi flour. This is Kiabi 
Vince has created this whole new product for the market, which is super exciting from a chef's perspective because it's gluten-free, it's diabetic-friendly. I mean, this stuff, is, it's like an amazing superfood. I mean, if, if you didn't know, you would think it's like powdered honey. Yeah. You know, from a chef's perspective, yeah. like really? powdered honey. We're blending up these Kiavi bean pods into flour, and it's amazing. I taste a little bit. It's got such a sweet note. I'm really excited to see what Mike's going to do with it. Mike, that's that's looking good. But what? Yeah. How, well, how much do you need for dinner? You think? Yeah, maybe just maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, yeah let's go. Yeah, so we got plenty, All right, man. bro. All right. Go for it. It's been amazing seeing what Vince is doing here at Wai'anae Gold with the Kiavi, and so now we're going to head up to uh, meet a friend, Dave, and we're going to do some pig hunting. We went fly fishing and caught some oil. We gathered kiave down at the coast and made some flour. Now it's time to meet up with Dave and go hunting for pigs in the mountains. Having a little pig issue over here, and you know, I'm glad you guys took time to come out here and help us take care of the issue, you know? And we meet up with Dave and his buddy Mark and longtime hunters and fishermen. They've been asked by the landowners on this particular property to help control the wild pig population. Drop Mark off here, and we can head on back there. Okay. Hopefully, we get lucky, get something, and can put something for Mike. All right, let's go. All, All right, right Mark. good luck, gentlemen. Dave's luck. plan is he's going to take me and Mike up to an area where he knows the pigs frequent, and his friend Mark is going to go to another area. So we've got kind of two plans going at the same time. Thank you. Pigs are a problem up here, right? Huh? Yeah, you know we got a lot of pigs around here. You know. You yeah. can only control it. You can never get rid of it. Yeah. We're going to be hunting with bow and arrow, and there's some really great advantages to that. Number one, it's quiet, which is really great for the people living around. And arrows don't travel as far as bullets, so it's much safer. Yeah, shot from here, you know, look like too many branches. Not a good, not a good shot. Dave spots a pig through the bushes, and he sights it in, but the way it's looking, it's longer than 50 yards, and it's through a bunch of brush. It's, it's not a really good shot, and we're not really quite sure. Yeah, it's a far shot. Too. Yeah, kind of far. Mm -hmm. About 51 yards, but still far. These guys have to be on their game. You know, shooting with a bow, you know, you, you want to shoot and make sure you shoot to kill because you don't want the animal to suffer. So uh, these guys have to really be good at what they do. So I'm really excited today to just kind of watch, watch and learn from these guys. Okay, press on. Yeah, let's go. The shot is too long on this pig we're looking at, and it gets spooked and takes off. Okay, let's go. We're going to go up here. Okay. Dave says we head further up the mountain, and so we start going to the spot that he, he's pretty sure we can find some pigs at. After hiking further up, we get to the spot that Dave knows pigs frequent, and we get down low, he hears some rustling, and he spots some across the valley. It's not a great shot. We got a lot of stuff in our way, so we're trying to make our way up the path to get a clear line of sight on these pigs. Dave's got his compound bow. I'm going to be hunting with a crossbow of his, which from short ranges has the accuracy of a gun, especially with the sights, but it's still silent like a bow. We're in this little valley. The pigs are rooting around on one side, and we're on the other, kind of hidden by some California grass. I know he's gearing up for the shot, and uh, we're all being very still and quiet. I get that crossbow up, and I'm, I'm sighting him in, and right there I get to take my shot. At the same time as I pull my trigger, something spooks the pigs, and they take off into the bushes. Clean mess. And something spooked the pig. I know it looks at me, and I was like, it wasn't me, bro. We're running out of time. Mike and I got to get going. It looks like the menu's going to be fish and kihave. So we got the surf. We didn't quite get to turf, but we got some great stuff to work with for the dinner. So I'm really excited to get back in the kitchen.
We got a couple really nice size oio, the bone fish. We got some chiave flour, super interesting ingredients, and I know Mike's gonna do something amazing with it. The first dish we're gonna make is a chiave bean gnocchi. And for that, we're gonna use um, roasted potatoes, salt, eggs, extra virgin olive oil, butter, chiave bean flour, and Parmesan cheese. The potatoes have been roasted for about an hour um, at 350 degrees in a convection oven. Um, and what we did is as soon as you pull them out of the oven, you're gonna let them sit for about five, 10 minutes, but you wanna handle them when they're hot because that's gonna help with the texture of the gnocchi. So the first thing we'll do is we'll cut the potatoes in half. And we'll take that half and then scoop that into a bowl. And we'll just kind of break up the potatoes a little bit. Once that's done, we'll crack uh, two eggs into the center. We'll add the extra virgin olive oil and the butter that has been melted. We'll add some Parmesan cheese, a little salt, and some of our chiave bean and our all-purpose all flour. And we'll just slowly start to mix all that together until it comes together. So we'll keep kneading the dough until it's uh, somewhat of a pasta consistency. You don't want to over, you want to knead it for a couple minutes. You don't want to overwork it or else your gnocchi are going to be really, really heavy. So once it's kneaded, we're then going to uh, cut off a small piece. We're basically going to roll it into logs. So once you have it rolled out, we're then just going to cut about an inch pieces off. You could do that for everything you've rolled out. Okay. And then what you do is you'll take a fork take the back side of it, you'll take the gnocchi, you'll kind of roll it up the fork um, to get some kind of like a little indentation on it. For our gnocchi, the last step is we need to uh, boil for about uh, two minutes in boiling salted water. Um, you'll know they're, they're done when they come up and float on the surface for about 30 seconds. To finish our gnocchi, after they cook in the water for a couple minutes, we're going to kind of make the sauce, and that's going to be two steps. First step is we're going to saute off in a saute pan um, some applewood bacon and kale, and then we're going to saute off the actual gnocchi, um, and then we'll serve that, and then we'll make a sauce in the same pan with brown butter, uh, lemon juice, and some fresh Parmesan cheese. This is really exciting. You know, chiave is, is new to me. It's, I'm not very familiar with it. And then oio, I love it, but they're hard to catch those things, so I don't work with it too often. So this is a really exciting dinner because this is challenging for a chef. For our second dish, we're going to do kind of a take on a classic fish cake, but we're gonna do a fish cake katsu with the oio. Um, what we've done with this is we've scaled it, we've gutted this oio, um, and then we did put it in the freezer for about 15 minutes. The first step to cleaning the oio is we're gonna cut a small chunk out of the tail. The next step then is we're gonna use a rolling pin and we're gonna roll out the, the meat out of the back of that hole that we made in the tail. Once you get the bulk rolled out, you can uh, go back to more traditional way too and just to make sure you don't, you know, any, no meat goes to waste and rip a filet real fast and then just scrape with the spoon. So we're gonna take our oil in a bowl and to that we're gonna add sesame oil, green onion, grated carrot, salt, grated ginger, cornstarch, grated garlic. Once you have your OEO mixed, we're then gonna make the cakes. And what we're gonna do is form those cakes and then we're gonna bread those in AP flour and chiavi flour, egg wash, and then breadcrumbs, panko breadcrumbs. The last step for our OEO uh, fish cake katsu is to heat up a pan and then we are going to brown each cake in a little blend of canola oil, extra virgin olive oil. Finish those in a 350 degree oven for about five minutes. The guests for dinner are here. Uh, the food, it's looking good. It's super exciting, super fun dishes. Um, I'm really excited, I hope they enjoy it. It's time to, uh, time to have dinner. Mike's created some pretty amazing stuff for dinner. People are arriving, it's time to eat. All right. Ready everyone, here we go. This is a chiave bean gnocchi, and then that is in a um, oio fish cake. Can't wait to dive in. Enjoy. Dive in Thank then. You. Okay. <laughs>
I don't know, this might be the first gnocchi in the world made with chiave bean flour. Probably. Yeah. So it's really nice, it's that slightly sweet mm -hmm. flavor to it. That and then, yeah, with that citrus. I love the fish patty, I love that extra crunch. Nice. Very good. Okay. Mike and I love adventure, and what's been so cool about this is just the interesting and unique ingredients that we're able to use as food, things you don't normally think about. And that's what makes this stuff so special and just amazing to be a part of. Everybody, let's cheers to Mike. This was an outstanding oh, yeah, Thank you, Mike. Thank you. My pleasure. And, all right. Yes, and Kainoa, Kainoa, too. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Mike did the cooking. Number <laughs> one. <laughs> The beauty of the challenge isn't just in this search, it's in the imagination to create something amazing out of unfamiliar ingredients. And Chef Mike, he conquered that challenge. Thank you for watching Search Hawaii. And don't forget, you can find his recipes online at searchhawaiitv.com. Aloha. Search Hawaii, where food meets culture, is brought to you by Grand Wailea, a Waldorf Astoria resort on Maui. We live to create extraordinary lifetime memories. With transportation provided by Hawaiian Airlines.